Okay, uh, the John Birch Society, big big topic. John Birch Society, of course, was the uh, point of origin of the entire uh, array of white right-wing organizations that we see today. And the John Birch Society was a controlled opposition movement. I just want to read a quote uh, by Anton Chagan, who, which he wrote in one of his exposés. There are a lot of little brothers watching Big Brother. The quote refers to George Orwell's novel 1984, in which the dictatorial government, Big Big Brother, created false opposition movements secretly under its control. Orwell's novel is modeled on British Empire practice, as in Kenya, where the British set up ineffective opposition to colonialism as counter gangs to subvert true independence movements. And the thing about opposition, false opposition movements, uh, that they are operated, I'm, I'm, uh, I've stopped quoting from Anton Chaikin, but they are secretly controlled uh, by people uh, who uh, are part of the very opposition that they claim to be against. And their purpose is to render any opposition to their agenda as ineffective and to subvert any opposition that would arise, true opposition that would arise uh, among the people that they are trying to control. Now, the John Birch Society was founded in 1958 by Robert Welch, uh, who is believed to have been a 32nd degree Mason. About 20 years later, uh, there was an expose of the John Birch Society published called the Belmont Brotherhood. Uh, This was in 1977 that a group of former high-ranking John Birch members uh, uh, wrote this expose of the National Council at Belmont, Massachusetts. Now, that was where the John Birch headquarters were originally located. The expose profiles 13 of the John Birch founding council council members and some of the later Birch figures that were on the uh, board of the American Pinion magazine. Now, these 13 John Birch council members, uh, the founding members of the John Birch Society, uh, all of them were either high-ranking Freemasons uh, or connected directly with the Federal Reserve System, or else they were Council for Nas- or Council on Foreign Relations members. Um, all of their credentials uh, were the credentials of liberal, global, uh, totalitarians and power elites. Well, when these uh, researchers who worked for Robert Welch and these council, national council discovered this, they were very angry. And they wrote the Belmont Brotherhood. And the head of this committee was Nicholas Bove. Um, he analyzed the whole situation uh, at the end of the Belmont Brotherhood expose. He said... He wrote, you may object, look at all the great things Robert Welch has done. He has exposed the Illuminati, baloney. The Illuminati was merely a branch of the conspiracy. How can one attack the Illuminati without attacking the diabolical power behind it, organized Freemasonry? Welch has provided the most valuable service of all time to the conspiracy. He founded an organization to neutralize millions of Americans from discovering the true power behind the Illuminati. And we can see that the Masons chose an extremely clever man to do the job. Welch, uh, Welch, with the help of the Belmont Brotherhood, plays his role very effectively. And indeed he did. And Robert Welch was very soft on Freemasonry. He, In his writings, he said that the Freemasons were a very patriotic uh, group of American citizens, uh, and here the John Burt's founding uh, council was uh, infested with Freemasons. So uh, when you think of the right wing that we have today, remember that it was launched uh, by a group of Freemasons with uh, attachments to the Council on Foreign Relations and the Federal Reserve System, uh, to Rockefeller, to Morgan, to all of the uh, power elites that uh, have this agenda for world domination. Now, Robert Welch uh, died in 1983, and he was succeeded upon his death by 
uh, former Congressman Larry McDonald. Uh, now, Congressman McDonald also died in the same year in the downing of the Korean airliner, uh, KAL-007. It was over Russian airspace, and the excuse was that the airliner had uh, tr- uh, trespassed into Soviet airspace and was shot down. However, there is a lot of suspicion that this was not the case. Larry McDonald, uh, in 1979, he founded uh, what is called the Western Goals Foundation. And the Western Goals was a front for the John Birch Society Intelligence Network. Western Goals was an intelligence, uh, intelligence front. It was directed by McDonald until his death in 1983, and it went defunct in 1986 uh, after a a power struggle that I won't go into here. But Larry McDonald had strong ties to the Korean uh, CIA, which worked with our CIA. He also had ties to the Reverend Sun Young Moon, uh, the leader of the Unification Church, which is just a, a cover for the Korean intelligence operations. And also the Korean military, the South Korean military, but Larry McDonald also was well connected with Hitler's Nazi network, uh, which I'll go into in a minute. McDonald also took over the massive computerized files of Senator Joe McCarthy, uh, that raving anti-communist, uh, who, uh, had the government investigating private citizens. Now, people believe that all of this was done in the name of uh, preserving American freedom, but the facts show that what was going on was a massive espionage uh, operation on the American people. Now, the the files that Senator McCarthy uh, uh, compiled, uh, uh, dossiers on private citizens, passed into the hands of Larry McDonald and the Western Goals Foundation. Uh, millions of names of people worldwide were in these uh, in this database, and uh, I'd I'd like to look now at some of the connections of the Western Goals Foundation um, besides Joe McCarthy, uh, because it will uh, illuminate what this anti-communism movement was all about. Now, Western Goals worked with one of Adolf Hitler's chief intelligence officers. Uh, His name was Reinhard Galen. Uh, In 1945, as the war was ending, Galen offered the United States his considerable experience, expertise, and archives on Russia and the satellite countries in return for immunity from prosecution as a war criminal. And I'm reading now, I'm going to read from the Interhemispheric Resource Center file on Western Goals. McDonald formed a foundation branch, that's a branch of the Western Goals Foundation in West Germany in 1981. It was financed by one-third of Western Goals' operating budget. The German affiliate is Western Goals Europe, EV. This German branch is also known as the American European Strategy Institute. Sounds like a nice name. (laughs) But it acknowledges working with Reinhard Galen, a former Nazi who had been honored by the elite Catholic organization, the Knights of Malta. It seems the Knights of Malta gave its highest honor of award to Galen, this Nazi war criminal, in 1948. And Galen was not even a Catholic. Uh, He was honored because of his efforts in the, and I quote, crusade against godless communism. Now, Galen headed Adolf Hitler's spy operations against the Soviet Union during World War II. After the war, he and his spy apparatus, staffed mostly by former Nazis, were recruited by our CIA, and he became the first director of the Bund in West Germany, Uh, which was West Germany's intelligence agency. So here we have the whole Nazi uh, apparatus brought into our country, and uh, 
staffing our Central Intelligence Agency, our FBI, and Reinhard Galand allowed to go back to Germany and set up an intelligence operation there, which collaborated uh, not only with our CIA, but with Western Goals, which was an offshoot of the John Birch Society. Now, also, another connection within the John Birch Society was uh, an Israeli espionage, espionage agent, agent. And we're going to see how all of this ties together as I get into this a little more, maybe not today, uh, but it all does tie together, I believe. Um, John Rees uh, was one of the earliest members of the Western Goals Foundation. He wrote all of its publications, and he was the principal espionage, espionage agent for Western Goals. He was also a member of the John Birch Society. His wife had worked with Joe McCarthy and uh, Roy Cohn, uh, McCarthy's Jewish lawyer, instrumental in obtaining Rees' entrance to Western Goals was a man by the name of J. Peter Gray.